Johnny, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most! Now, I know Tiger Woods and Arnold Palmer, the T-man himself, are not coming out here to do this putting green, but I think I did a pretty good job. Let's talk about how I built it in two days for under $1,000. Nice flipping choice. Day one, second putting green. Got my boy Trey over here, hiding from the camera. He's camera shy. About to tear it up. Not sure how it's going to turn out. Spending a little more on this one. So hopefully it turns out better. Stay tuned to find out. So here I am just marking down the putting green with some marking spray paint, going about a foot or two wider on the circle of it, just because I knew what I was going to do with it in my design. I was kind of thinking in my head. I rented this sod cutter from Home Depot for about $130 for the day, and it was one of the best investments that I made. I didn't get one last time, but man, this thing is very, very helpful. It made the digging process so much easier. You need somebody else to help you unload it and load it back up, though, if you rent it because this thing is heavy. So as you see, we kind of just took the mat off, started digging, kind of just going in our circle that we knew. The green I bought was a six by 15 putting green that was already pre-cut with four holes into it. It had really good reviews and a lot of really high end turf that I liked compared to the first one that I will link in the description and above. One of my favorite albums ever. Shout out to Jay-Z. So yeah, really, this took a lot, just a lot of manual labor just getting the dirt out. Even with the side cutter, it was still a pretty good amount of work making sure it was as level as possible. Here I am spraying a long-term weed killer, kind of going over tray, finding some little holes and stuff to kind of make a little more level as we go about, just trying to make each step more level than the one before. That was definitely the hardest part about with putting green projects is, is making sure that you get it as level each step that you take it. We had a manual temp that helped kind of do this on the side. We put down some landscaping fabric now, put some landscaping staples around it. This will just help keep the weeds out for as long as we can. As you can see my geodome in the background, this is one reason why I'm building this putting green. It is for my Airbnb properties. I like building these and doing these kind of projects because I think it adds, you know, just different amenities that make the guests really enjoy their stay. So here we ended up putting out some bender board. I wanted to do that to kind of help us with the shape. I kind of got screwed with my rock this is you know this is a, a a test of of will with this project and i want to make it known to everybody that things don't always go how you're going to plan them some videos you watch on youtube everything just goes absolutely right well this is not one of them i ordered quarter inch or less crushed limestone from a company local and they were going to deliver it i had to pay a fee i told them hey if it's not a quarter inch or less i'm going to need at least three eighths an inch or less and they said, no problem, we got you on that. When this limestone got delivered, it was actually way bigger than that was. There was definitely some finer grounds in there, but it was a mix of all types of rock. I was highly, highly disappointed, but I'd initially thought to put mulch around the putting green instead of doing a fringe because the fringe seems like the hardest part to putting greens. And I, like I said, this is not for a PGA regulated course, so I'm just gonna keep it moving how I think it looks good. So I ended up deciding to use the crushed limestone as my first level of base. It's just one inch of it, pretty much. So we're kind of spreading the crushed limestone out just a little bit in the area to kind of figure out where we want to go. We just had a rake for this, but here more problems come. <laughs> my mini compactor that I rented from Home Depot, the cord snapped on the first pull. You can see my frustration in my face because at this point it's one of those days it's just like, man, I'm not sure when something's going to go right, but I'm just going to have to keep pushing through it. <laughs> so here we are working late into the night making sure everything's leveled out as we could. We ended up grabbing a new compactor, went back to the Home Depot rental section. I had this mini compactor and it helped smooth everything out. I rented it for $140 a day, maybe a little less than that. And we ended up grabbing a few bags of cement as well to put on top of the crushed limestone to kind of really push it down and make it as smooth and as level as possible. We didn't grab too much and just added some water on top of it. It's not a fully cementized <laughs> putting green, but we knew that was a good step to kind of help with the crushed limestone so we got screwed in that department. Here we are running the, the compactor around it many times. We have the man to manual tamp going around the edges, tamping out some final spots because I knew it was gonna get extremely hard overnight with the concrete that was going in over top the crushed limestone, shaking my head in somewhat approval because after one of the longest days I had, and there was more left. So the next day, Trey had to roll out, so it was just me, myself, and I, me, myself, and I. <laughs> Working on this, I ended up putting some decomposed granite over top of it, 
tamping it down, manual tamping around a compactor over it as well. I was thinking that the decomposed granite was gonna be my last stage, but I wasn't too happy with how actually the top texture of was it. I've seen a lot of people online talk about decomposed granite should be your final stage, not sand. There's been, a, I guess, a big argument in the putting green community about what you should do next as your final step. So I used the decomposed granite, put it around as much as I could. It was some crushed fines, basically, and I leveled it out as much as I could, filling in little spots using my four foot level to see what needed work, what didn't need work, and kind of just scooping it with the level as well. But then in the end, I did decide to put some number 30 sieve silver sand down. It took me a long time finding this product. I had to go find it from a local sandblaster. The guy was nice enough to almost give me the bags, but I ended up just throwing him some money for him as 200 pound bags. And as you can see, my seed spreader that I was gonna use the sand for didn't work. I have it, that's why it's laying down on the back, in the back there, because it was not working for this. So one thing after another just kept going wrong. Here I'm kind of just checking the roll of the putting green. I kind of threw it on top. Now I'm marking my holes with the marking spray. And then I'm just doing some good old fashioned hole digging to dig these holes in. And one thing about them was I kind of shifted them under what actually was already pre-cut. So that was one thing that kind of didn't work in my favor, but I made it work to the best of my abilities. And that's one thing you just need to pay attention to. Maybe the pre-cut holes in the fabric wasn't the best thing because, you know, some of these are kind of hard to build. So here I am smushing the cup in, smushing, 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 trying to get it as level as possible around there. It was kind of tough because this I live on 10 acres and I'm building the glamping site on there too, but there's not the most level terrain really anywhere on this place. So I had to really, really do it. I was manual tamping it down, tamping around it, really trying to get it as level as I could for as many inches around as I could shoveling up the crushed limestone that they left me as you can see there's some pretty good sized rocks there's a lot of small ones in there but it was so hard to get the small ones because they all went to the bottom put it in my little gorilla cart and I'm bringing it over there and I'm gonna dump it inside and make a little ring basically of the raisin risen <laughs> not raisin the risen putting green you know it's not necessarily my favorite thing that I wanted to go with but I am trying to do this astronaut theme so I do think it kind of looks like moon rocks and all that I ended up putting some bricks around the area making sure they were as level as possible got these from Home Depot delivered I wasn't exactly sure what color I wanted it was having a hard time finding ones that would make it easy enough to get delivered and everything like that but I ended up deciding on these because I think they all kind of resemble moon rocks or Mars they were a little different colored in the picture but they came in at a pretty decent price and pretty cool overall. So I'm pretty satisfied. Just going around and just making sure everything's as level as possible as I can before I put a second layer of stones on some of them. This is some construction adhesive. You didn't know your caulking gun can cut the tip off and you also can poke it with a little threader up there at the front. Didn't really even know for the longest time. I'm putting that adhesive on it to make sure the top layer of bricks, so I'm putting two layers in some side, sticks just as well as the other ones. Here I'm giving a little test shot before I'm almost done. Check the knee pad swag. Ooh, very flush. And then the last thing I'm doing really, besides just kind of finishing out and making it as pretty as possible, is I'm going around with some three inch finishing nails instead of landscape staples. Landscape staples do rust. I saw that with my other putting green and some other projects I've worked on. I saw a guy in the comments of one putting green video and he was mentioning how he uses finishing nails. I thought it was a really good idea because they do not rust like that and they're very easy to install and very discreet. So quick stop in, I didn't give you a chance to give you a material and price breakdown. I will have everything in the description, but here's a quick one. The putting green was from allturfmats.com. I had a sale for it going for about $300 when I got it. I see that it's about $379 now on there, but it's a great putting green. I spent about $100 on a cubic yard of crushed limestone to get delivered, even though it wasn't the best limestone, so I'm a little disappointed with the company. I spent about $50 on cement bags. I think we got about nine or 10 of them. Then I spent about $75 on decomposed granite and 30 silver sand. The edge stones ran me about $50. The sod cutter and compactor rental ran me about $250. Cups and flags were about $50 and the landscape fabric and weed killer was about $50 as well. There's also some infill sand I'm gonna add on top of the turf at the very end of it. I haven't filmed that yet because I haven't been able to find the product I'm looking for. Let me know in the comments if you know what kind of sand I should put over top of the putting green because I'm trying to figure out the right one and Lowe's canceled my order, Amazon canceled my order. I'm trying to find the right one, but adding that all into the equation, that's about $25 to $50 there. I'm gonna be at about $950 total for this project. And here is the final result. Put a couple flags in it. I am still adding a few other things, some string lights, some other little accoutrement. I did put these cool tiles that I got from Wayfair in there to kind of fit the theme of the astronaut in space theme that I do have going and they do glow in the dark. I'm gonna keep adding some things, so let me know in the comments below if you got any cool suggestions to add to the place to help me fit that NASA theme. I don't know, I hope you subscribed last in this video this long of hearing me ramble on. See y'all in the next one, peace.